All right, since I went a little crazy making mugs last week, I figured I'd better provide the dolls with some way to store some of those mugs. So this week, we're making a mug tree. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. Alright, the first thing we are going to do is work with our upright piece of our mug rack. And I recommend leaving it on the hole strip. Don't cut it loose until you've got your holes drilled. But we're going to mark. So the first thing we need to mark is I want to mark off an inch and a half on all sides. That will be my cutting line. That way I can keep track of how much space I have on the side. And I'm doing this kind of quickly and as usual you guys have the view I don't. Yeah you do. I had to look there to make sure I hadn't managed to get off camera. Um, but those should be pretty much lined up all the way around. Uh, that just gives me an idea of how long this is. I'm going to use a tool to cut it where I won't have to you know have those lines perfect. Now this is a quarter inch by quarter inch piece of basswood. You could also use a quarter inch dowel, which I will show you in the intro you saw, the one made with the round piece, and I'll show you in more detail when we're all done with this one. You just want something the upright is a quarter inch across. It can be square or it can be round. It doesn't matter. We are going to mark down a quarter inch from the top on one side. And then at the same time, we are going to mark the middle about. That'll give us a spot to drill. Now, the opposite side, the same markings. You could also kind of go down in a spiral fashion. Look at, at mug trees online or, you know, in the store. Get an idea what you want it to look like. Now, oops, I'm double checking my sizes. I want to go down on the other two sides, the same markings. I'm going to go down about three-fourths of an inch, I think, on this one. And again in the middle. Flip it all the way over. So I'm catching my ruler on something over. That, that way my ruler is catching on something. <laughs> it's not cooperating with me. And mark the middle. And this is approximately a quarter inch. It might be three eighths inch. I think it's a quarter inch though. Now, this is easier to drill while it's all, all still here. Normally I would get out my pin vise, but I have done something with my pin vise. I don't know what and I can't find it today. So I, I have found if I'm really careful and my wood isn't too hard, I don't need it. I can actually go in without it. And this is a drill bit. It's a black and black and decker, five sixty fourths of an inch. Oops, there's the camera. Five sixty fourths of an inch. Uh, this is a good size for toothpicks, and I'm using the ones with the fancy heads. And I'm going at kind of an angle. Let's see if I can put this up. I'm trying to keep my keep them all at about this angle going in where your hole was and if you're really careful you can do this without a pin vise. Like I said as long as the wood isn't too hard. It's a little hard on your fingers. Your fingers will be sore when you're done. But um, and if you can find your pin vise, good, good, use it. I don't know where I put mine. I think I put it away and I don't know where. Either that or it's with a project that's partially finished. So we're going to go in until it feels like you've gone in and it's a secure hole. Um, let's see if I can. It's about that far. And we're just going to do the same thing on all four of these markings. So I'm going to, rather than having you watch me do this, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to drill all four holes and then I'll be back. All right, so all my holes are drilled. They didn't line up perfectly. I think I was off on my measurement, but that's okay. They don't have to. Now I have some of these fancy cut toothpicks. And since the ends are always kind of funky colored, I like to uh, kind of do this on them. 
Uh, if you don't have these, you can use a regular toothpick. Just uh, cut off the so you're on the flat part. Or use the end and put a bead on it. That would be cute too. I'm going to do four of these and then hopefully I won't need the other one. I like to, this makes it look a little more finished on the end. All right, now I'm going to use my easy cutter. There is a line here that's a cutting line. What I'm doing, and I'm going to pull this off camera in order to cut them, but I'll try and do one here. I've been lining the head of my, the end of that with that and cutting off. That gives me a good length. It's cut off just past, whoops, there's the camera, just past the thing. And I'm going to cut this off. If it cuts crooked, we will need to sand it flat. It cut a little bit crooked. We'll do use an emery board until it stands, until it wants to stand straight. A little more. So I'm going to turn the camera off and cut the other three of these, and then I'll be back. All right, so I'm using my tile I had my glue on the other day. I don't want to get glue all over my desk. So we are going to dip, and I brought the camera up a little bit so you got a little wider angle. And stick one of these into each of these holes. They don't have to go in a long ways. They just have to go in a little bit. Whoops. This is much easier when I don't have the camera on. last one will be the most difficult to put in. Now, just let this rest off of the edge of here and let that glue dry. When that glue is dry, I'll be back. All right, once that glue has set up, we can glue a base onto our mug tree. Now, first make sure that you are standing straight, that you have, yeah, this is pretty well sanded. I'm going to touch it up just a little bit. Everything's all nice and neat. And then you need to pick your base. Uh, three quarters of an inch across, I think, is the best size. This is a little big. This is an inch, but it would work. It's just one of these little wood circles from one of these little packages of wood. What I'm using today is this button. It's a little deep, but I like that. I like the shape, and I can cover the holes with my upright piece. So I'm going to put some glue over here, and I'm going to dip my base into my glue. And I'm going to need to be really careful how I position this, because what I want to do is position it on kind of an angle. Oh, this would be so much easier if I was above it. So that, let's see if I can get this on here, I want to cover the holes with the corners and get this, oh, it's not centered. I'm going to put this over here where I can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's better. Make sure that you're straight, which I'm not, and let that glue completely set up. All right, so this has dried overnight, so I know that the glue is completely dry. And that's important for the next step, because the next step is to put some kind of finish on it. I am going to spray this with just a clear sealer. You could color it with a paint. I do recommend, since we've used these little toothpicks, that, we, um, that you spray paint rather than try to brush paint it, because brush painting can sometimes kind of fill in those little details. And we don't want to lose those little details. 
So I'm going to put about two or three coats of clear finish on this, and when that's dry, I'll be back, and we'll look at this with some mugs on it. All right, so here is our cup holder, complete with its clear finish. Uh, I also did this one with a round dowel, and I put a heart-shaped, you can probably see the bottom from the bottom better, uh, on the bottom of it. I thought that was really cute. So let's put some mugs on there. I made a whole bunch of mugs since the video last week. These were all, these things I have found are kind of addictive. So let's put some mugs on here. So I can do this without knocking over my cup trees. But I love this project. I think it is so cute. This would be adorable in a dollhouse kitchen or a little gift shop or a little cafe. Whatever your scene is, there's a lot of places you could display. Oops, that one's the one that the handle's too small. I did, did make one mug that the handle turned out too small to go over these. This is really difficult when I'm holding on to the tray of mugs. All right. Oops. I've got all the others going that way. So there we go. We have this cute mug tree. Uh, be sure and check the blog post. I'll have better pictures where you'll be able to actually see what these look like with the mugs on them. And I will try to give the dimensions of everything. So I hope you enjoyed our project today. Be sure and check the blog post, like I said, for photos. And jump on over to Facebook if you haven't already. The link is in the description box. It's the easiest way to get in touch with me. And I usually provide some teaser photos during the week so you have kind of a heads up as to what we are doing. So I will talk to you later. Bye.